Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a review on Shinemate's newest flagship dual action polishes in the form of the EX620 5-15 and the EX620 6-21 quartered polishes. I've put some basic specs on screen about both polishes and I'll have links to where I got them in the description box as well as the link to Shinemate's own website if you want a little bit more info. But at the time of making this review they were yet to be locally listed so I don't have prices but from what I've been told they will be slightly more expensive than the existing 610 series but still significantly cheaper than most top tier competitors and should be out soon if not right now. I should also mention that these new EX620 polishes won't be replacing the existing 610 series range, but are rather an addition to Shinemate's ever-growing car polisher range. As per usual, my focus with this video will be how these new polishes look, feel and perform, what you can expect from them, as well as my own personal conclusions based on spending quite a bit of time with them over the last few months. Now for those of you that saw my review of the new cordless Shinemate polishes a while back, you will notice that these new 620 series polishes have adopted many of those same design feature upgrades that include the use of higher quality plastics that just look and feel more solid, as well as some improvements to the shape and ergonomics of these new machines that additionally include softer and more rubberized grips. What this basically means is that these machines don't just look a little nicer, but they also feel better and more comfortable in your hands, the buttons are a bit more clicky, the dial turns a little smoother and everything just feels a bit more premium than you would expect at this price point. Now Shinemate have certainly still carried over their own trademark design and colours with these new 620 polishes, but when you directly compare them to the existing 610 series range, it just becomes abundantly clear that they are completely new machines from the ground up, which goes beyond the new motor, running management system and counterweights, but also follows through to the way they look, feel and sound, which is like something new entirely. Now, due to their larger motors, there is a slight weight increase over the 610 series, which is approximately an extra 100 to 150 grams for the 620 machines. So it's certainly not a huge weight gain, but still worth mentioning. As far as machine features go, you can expect to have all the niceties found in premium DA polishes today, such as a soft start to prevent product splatter, a progressive trigger that gives you control over the speed range depending on how far you press it down, a trigger lock button for continuous polishing, a speed management system that maintains a constant speed throughout polishing, and a very generous 5 meter cord. Now these features aren't anything new, but what is new is the improved quality in which they are presented and executed in the EX620 polisher range. So the progressive trigger just feels more sensitive and precise with better feedback. The trigger lock button is bigger and easier to activate and deactivate. The cord is with a higher quality attachment to the machine. And perhaps most impressive of all is the far more intelligent and capable speed management system that is actually constantly maintaining the selected speed as you apply more or less pressure and as you take the polisher through panel curves and crevices. I'll talk more about this later but it's just on another level compared to any other DA I've ever used as it seems to sense when the pad rotation is stalling and just kick in with some extra torque almost instantly to keep the rotation going, which is just more impressive, noticeable and powerful than anything I've experienced to date. Also important to note is the OPM speed range that's now 3000 to 5800 oscillations per minute across both polishers compared to 2000 to 4500 for the current 610 series. Now I've said it before in past dual action polisher reviews that all speeds under 3 are always just a waste because the machine just completely stalls and jumps around at those lower OPM speeds. But even if you want those lower speeds, you can just half press the trigger anyway to spread the product across the panel. But this is the first time I've ever used a dual action polisher on speeds below 3 where it can actually still spin freely and truly make use of that lower speed range. Now I may be wrong, but I also think that the 5800 OPM top speed 
is the fastest top speed we've seen on any comparative polisher to date. And I realised that a larger 800 watt motor and speed doesn't always mean more power to the pad, as there's a lot of other things such as counterweights, machine intelligence and management that also rely on that. But take it from me guys, you just haven't seen anything in the DA polisher world that even comes close to the power and torque that these new 620 machines can output. Now Shimei claims that these machines have a 30% speed increase and a 60% power and performance increase over the current 610 series polishers. But if someone told me that it was a 100% increase, I really wouldn't doubt it. And I want you guys to understand that when you pick up these new polishers, it's not a matter of thinking, yes, maybe they do have a bit more power than other polishers on the market. It just couldn't be more obvious that these polishers are just in a different league when it comes to power and torque and minimal rotational stall. It's also important to note that these two polishers are quite different to each other in that area. So as powerful and capable as the 620-15 is, the 620 21mm polisher is way more powerful and at its top end it's also a little intimidating. And that's coming from someone who's been correcting paint for over 25 years. There's also a difference in the way they both feel. The 15 is definitely more civil, smoother and comfortable to work with. And I'd actually say it's the smoothest, most well-balanced polisher Shymate has ever produced. But you just have to appreciate that when you crank it up towards the higher end, you're going to get more vibration as its top speed and output power is just well higher than other polishers on the market. And I think the only way Shinemate was able to get away with such a high OPM top speed is because the machines are so well balanced to begin with. Now the 21, as is the case with most 21mm throw DAs, does have a bit more vibration. And although I didn't think I'd ever say this, I almost feel like its top speed of 5800 OPM is just too much. So I kind of think that Shinemate should have topped it out at 5000 OPM, as it's still an absolute animal at that speed. But maybe it's just one of those things that it's better to have that extra speed and power and not need it, rather than need it and not have it. Now when I compared it to the Ripper's LHR21 Mark III, I have to say that the Rupes is a touch smoother and quieter, but torque wise and rotational stall wise it's not even close. The EX620 is just simply more powerful any way you look at it. And my guess is if the Rupes LHR 15 and 21 Mark III polishers had more powerful output and high speeds, they would actually feel and sound comparatively similar. So I don't want to be misleading and say that these new EX620 polishers are the smoothest and quietest machines out there because they're not. But when you take into consideration how powerful they are, by that standard they're actually amazingly smooth with all things considered. So what can you expect from these machines as a user? Size and weight wise there's really no significant difference compared to most other 15 and 21mm DAs in the market. So there's really nothing important to point out there. Sound or noise wise, I would place them a little noisier compared to the Rupes and Flex polishers. But feel, balance and quality wise, I think they're really up there with the best of brands. Now as I mentioned, the power output you feel and experience while using these 620 polishers is just undeniably way beyond any other polisher I've ever used. Now I certainly haven't used every polisher out on the market, but as I mentioned, it's not just a slight difference, it's really a dramatic power increase, so I just couldn't imagine any other polisher out there with as much raw output as these. And just to give you an example, I actually compounded an entire car with the 620 21mm polisher using Speed 2 with the microfiber pad and barely had any rotational stall whatsoever. I've never in 25 years of paint correction even polished a car with such low speeds on a DA polisher, let alone compounded one. So it was just an entirely new experience and also something that has opened up some new possibilities in approaching paint correction and using something like microfiber that tends to create so much heat 
and being able to manage or mitigate that heat with lower OPM speeds due to having so little rotational stall at those slower speeds because of that amazing speed management system that has so much torque at its disposal with its increased power output. I also want to say that yes, it's really interesting how a machine can achieve this from a mechanical, engineering or even programming standpoint, but that's really not my field of expertise. What I am good at is using and testing these machines out, and in doing so, all I can say is that no one with any credibility could possibly use them and not immediately see that they simply store less than any other free spinning DA polisher ever produced. And I wanted to point that out because the single most common question I get from you guys is always which DA polisher stores less or has more torque. The other truly amazing thing that I've discovered is that in many cases I've been noticing less heat generation between the backing plate and pads which is where heat always builds up on dual action polishers. I think we've all largely underestimated how much additional heat pad rotation store actually creates. Pads need to spin freely in order to cool themselves down. So when your pad stalls on the machine, it just builds up that heat so much faster. Now there's obviously a balance to be found as excessive speeds and even more so pressure will generate more heat. But because there's so little stall with these new machines throughout their speed range, it just seems as though they do in fact run cooler and just don't allow as much heat to build up compared to other DAs that will tend to stall and build up heat more easily. For me, this was a huge discovery that I just stumbled on while switching back and forth with other polishers and constantly found that the pads on these EX620 machines just always seemed to be a little cooler. And that honestly wasn't something I was even looking for, but just noticed time and time again, which kinda blew my mind. One thing I will say is that if there's anyone out there watching looking to buy their first DA polisher ever, you should probably look elsewhere. In my opinion, these two polishers are not for beginners or even the guy that's polished a couple of cars in the past. These are polishers for more experienced professionals or the experienced enthusiast. Used aggressively and in the wrong hands, these EX620 polishers can be just as, if not even more so aggressive than a rotary and certainly a gear driven DA. But used with a good foundation of knowledge and skill, they may be the most amazing free spinning DA polishers ever produced that can unlock new horizons and even take DA based paint correction to the next level. And if by chance Shymate is listening, please make a 620 mini 3 inch polisher as I would absolutely love to see this new power and torque in a 3 inch DA polisher. So if you guys haven't picked up on it by now, I really like these new EX620 machines and I'm not going to be shy in saying that I think they are the best professional DA polishers on the market as of today. I also know that a few other detailers around Australia were given these 620 polishers to test out and all I've heard so far is just jaw dropping feedback as well as them smiling and saying they're not going to give them back, which really says it all. So what are the cons of these polishers? As mentioned, they are slightly heavier and will be slightly more expensive than the current 610 series. Although the power cord length is great, it could be a little nicer and a higher quality cord. The bigger motors, torque and power output of these machines do tend to generate a bit more heat around the machine housing areas and they're also a touch louder than the current 610 range. At the top end and particularly with the 21, they also vibrate a little more. So I'm in no way saying that these machines are perfect. No machine polisher is. I'll end by saying that I bought my very first Shimei polisher about 10 years ago and the brand has actually been making car polishers for over 20 years. But over the last 5 years in particular, I've seen nothing but this brand just get better and better to the point that they just aren't keeping up with the market but actually starting to push it forward in new innovation. For you guys that actually watch this channel regularly, you'll know how much I love, use, show and review Ribes Flex and other polisher brands. 
And I also know that a lot of you guys become really loyal to these specific brands and sometimes even defensive. It's easy to put out accusations like Shinemate is just a Flex or Rupes knockoff brand. But when their polishes don't look, feel, sound or perform anything like those brands and actually start to feel quite unique and a little different. And when you see that they have their own history in this marketplace, it's just hard to accept those accusations. All I'm saying is that brands like Rupes and Flex do deserve a lot of praise for all they have done through innovation to help propel this detailing industry that I love forward. But without Rupes, Flex wouldn't be the brand it is today and vice versa. So when other brands start generating some heat, it's a good thing because it forces these more established brands to take note and we, the end user, end up winning with better and better products and equipment to choose from. I also noticed that most of the negative comments aimed at Shymate always seem to come from people who have never used them. So maybe it could be worth trying them before you pass judgment, as you may find there's something there that changes your mind. Paint correction is 80% of what I do as a detailer and I have tens of thousands of hours on polishing machines under my belt. But I'm not a Rupes guy, I'm not a Flex guy and I'm not a Shinemate guy. What I am is someone who appreciates great detailing products and whoever is pushing the boundaries the hardest always gets my attention and praise. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.